Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Avital Eidenbaum. I'm the creator of the membership website, The Social Media Fitness Gym, and I'm so excited to be talking to you about how to create a membership website using WordPress. Now, I do value your time, so let's jump right in and get started. Now, the first question many people ask is, who should create a membership website? What goes behind it? And why would someone consider creating a membership website? Now, a membership website is designed to protect certain content. In order to access it, they would have to pay for it. So creating um, content that is paid for content. Uh, one of the major things to have in mind in determining whether your content is valuable is does it solve a problem? Um, there's a lot of information available out there. Um, so in order for people to be enticed to pay for information, it essentially has to solve their problem. So whatever specific niche you're an authority in, um, how can you create content in such a way that it's relevant and valuable to the person and solves their problem? Now, there's a lot of work that goes into creating a membership website. Um, it does take a lot of time. It's not something that happens overnight. As many people know, creating a WordPress website, the second your site goes live, you don't see tons of traffic and tons of results. It takes time and work in order to build that traffic and build that following. So have that in mind when creating your membership website that even the launch phase and growing your followers is another process. Now I created the social media fitness gym using WordPress and from the leaders that I follow and what I learned while creating my membership website is the content that I'm going to be sharing with you in this presentation. So there's three levels of protection that go into creating your membership website. The first one obviously is creating your or protecting your paid for content from being accessed by non-paid members. And that's essentially going to be what we're going to be covering in this presentation. Now there's two other major points to have in mind. We won't have time to go into them really deep, but I will touch on them because they're still very important for any website out there. The second point is liability and that's, um, how are you protecting yourself in terms of liability and the risk of being sued based on what your content says? The third level of protection that all websites should have in mind and something that's become definitely relevant uh, given what's happened recently is protecting your site from hackers. So in your design phase, having a system in place to protect your site from hackers or to resolve the issue immediately if the situation arises. So now let's go into what it takes to design a WordPress membership website. Now there's a lot of options and tools available. The two biggest tools that I see leaders in my field use is Wishlist Member and Optimize Press. Um, there's two very distinct functions between Wishlist Member and Optimize Press that we'll cover, which is something that you'll have to take into consideration when designing your WordPress membership website. Wishlist member, which is what I use, is a plugin. It's something that you upload into your WordPress website, which already has a theme, and you're using Wishlist member to select which content is protected for which users and which members or non-members. Now, Wishlist is what I use and what I'll be covering in this presentation, but another option is Optimize Press, and what's different with Optimize Press is that Optimize Press is a theme. It's not a plugin. It works as the theme for your membership website. So when designing your WordPress membership site, have these in mind and decide what's best for you. Now, with a membership website, there's essentially two categories. There's the member versus the non-member, or what I call um, paid versus not paid or not paid yet. And that's something that you wanna have in mind, especially with a membership website where there's paid membership levels is just because the person doesn't buy from you the first time they find you doesn't mean they never will. It's something to have in mind when creating your membership website. So with membership websites comes the payment integration system 
with Wishlist member, there are 16 different payment options. They do cost money. So be sure when creating your membership website, if you already have one of these payment integrations set up, be sure to have that in mind. Or if you need to create a payment integration, make sure it works with your budget and needs. Just another thing to consider when creating your membership website. So now let's go into the membership levels. Now there's different types of membership levels. And one thing that Wishlist helps you do is create a free membership level. And by doing so, you would allow this not paid member yet to access certain content on your site. Hopefully uh, by doing this, you would be creating a relationship with them where eventually they would pay for accessing more content. Um, but either way, it's up to you in how you decide to create your membership website. Now to give you a scenario, um, there's a paid level of like $97. And with this membership level, they would have access to more than the trial membership, but not necessarily access to all of the paid for content on your membership website. And that's where the next paid membership level comes in, where the highest paid membership level has access to all of the content. And this way you can create different levels of paid membership, depending on how much content you wanted to give out for each membership level. Something to have in mind when creating your membership website. Now let's say that a trial member was trying to access content they didn't pay for or didn't have access to. What would happen in wish list is they would give them a warning that the content they're trying to access is for members only and they would be taken to what wishlist calls an oops page this is a page that can be generated in wishlist setup wizard but it's still something you would want to customize when designing your website so now let's go into what a member sees and the process they go through in order to access your paid for content on your wordpress membership site the first page that everybody comes to is what I call the home page, and it's what your member sees when they are logged out of your membership website. Essentially, the home page of many membership websites works as a sales page. It's the page that um, membership owners are trying to use to drive transactions and membership to their site. What I see many of these home pages fail to have is a link to a login page. The login page uh, that is set up where a member enters their username and password in order to access the content is not the home page of your site. It's a different page set up um, that Wishlist will also help you set up in the setup wizard if you choose to use Wishlist. The login page essentially functions as enter the username and password and they have access to the content based off of their membership level, which is assigned when they register. So something to have in mind when creating your membership website is be sure to have a login button or a link to the login page for people to go to if they've already paid to access your content. And then once they've entered the information, they would have access to the content based off of their membership level. Now let's say if a non-member is trying to access the content, they would get a warning that the content they're trying to access is for members only, and they would be taken to an oops page. Again, you could use this page as an option to um, sell your membership level to entice that person to pay if they were trying to access paid for content that they didn't have access to. So what happens in the new member process? And these are the different pages and stages of what a new membership goes through when completing a transaction to access your paid content. The first thing they're gonna land on is some type of sales page, whether it's the squeeze page of their homepage, um, a separate sales page, um, or some type of landing page where they will be enticed to sign up for your membership. The oops page is also an opportunity you can use to um, sell your membership and to entice uh, a membership transaction. Whichever page they land on and decide to become a member, they're going to be taken to a sales page. And this sales page depends on what type of payment integration you're using, whether it's Infusionsoft or One Shopping Cart or PayPal. This page is essentially what, whatever payment system you're using and will redirect that user back to a thank you page or you can redirect them to an upsell page 
um, if you had another package to offer or wanted to try to make an additional transaction if that person's already trying to become a member. Now, upsells aren't required, but something to have in mind when creating your membership website, especially if you have separate information that you can package that would be valuable and relevant to that person and solves their problem. Whatever they end up purchasing, uh, whether it's from the sales page or the upsell page, they will be taken to a thank you page. And you're gonna wanna thank them for purchasing your content and deciding to become a member. This is also a page that Wishlist will set up in the setup wizard, but you would wanna go back and customize it uh, depending on what you want the wording to say. After the thank you page, they're taken to a registration page, which is where they're going to be creating a username and password for the membership level they paid for in order to access the paid for content on your website. Um, this is also a page Wishlist will help you create in the setup wizard, but you may wanna go back and customize it by adding your logo or helping customize the look and feel to your site. And once they go through the registration page, they're then taken into the login page, which is where they're going to be entering the username and password they created in the registration page in order to access all of the content they just paid for. So that's how the new member process works. Now, how do you lay out your WordPress membership site uh, for content that is paid for for members? And one thing to have in mind from what I've seen other membership websites create and what I've created is video modules are the essential content of your membership website. And video modules are created as a portfolio item not a blog post. Portfolio items and blog posts are two completely separate things and you do not wanna be creating blog posts for your content. You're going to be creating portfolio categories which will be your module numbers and the portfolio posts within each module will pertain um, to the videos in that module series. So module one, um, portfolio posts 1.1, 1.5 would all fall into module one. And module two, um, portfolio posts 2.2 and so on would fall into module two. What I have seen people do is they'll take the URL of the portfolio category and create it as a custom link, which they'll often call list view because what this does, it creates um, all of those modules for that particular category into a list. So it appears as a blog list uh, post, but functions as a portfolio category. So that's where you're gonna be creating and embedding your content is having a um, portfolio feature. So if you're using a, if you're creating a membership website using wish list, you're gonna to wanna to be sure you're using a theme that's compatible for video portfolio items. Not every single WordPress portfolio theme is compatible with video. And that's something you're gonna to wanna to make sure you take care of in the design phase to make sure your membership website functions properly. Having portfolio features and video embed capabilities. Now other pages to have in mind when creating your membership website are pages like bonuses and resources. What I've seen people do is these are just added incentives for encouraging someone to pay for a membership in order to access the video modules and something to have in mind when creating your own site. Another thing that I see a lot of people do, which is um, a huge enticement for encouraging paid for membership, are private community groups. These can be private Facebook groups or private Google Plus groups or communities that are only accessible to people that have paid for a certain membership level. Something to have in mind when creating your membership website. Now video modules are the essential content of creating your membership website. Um, but with video modules, you have to keep in mind that you are not going to go to your WordPress website and upload your videos. That would be terrible. What you have to do is host your videos through a third party source. And from this third party source, you would be grabbing the embed codes you need in order to create your membership website. Now with third party sources, there are different options that I've seen people use. Easy Video Suite and Vimeo seem to be pretty popular. There's also JW Player and a few others. I'm sure everyone's familiar with Vimeo. 
Easy Video Suite, however, works directly with Amazon S3. Now, Amazon S3 protects your content, but you don't get an embed code from your S3 file. That's what Easy Video Suite would um, provide if you used Easy Video Suite. Uh, whatever third-party source you use for choosing to host your videos, they are not cheap, and it will be something you will have to budget into creating your membership website. So have that in mind, depending on what your budget is and what, um, how it's compatible with your theme, um, you can decide what third-party host will work best for you. Now, I use Easy Video Suite, and one of the things I found helpful was they have a desktop app that sits on your desktop, and you're simply dragging and dropping your videos. Uh, whatever videos I export from ScreenFlow, I drag and drop into this Easy Video Suite app. What it does is it optimizes my videos for the web, and it also automatically stores them on my Amazon S3 account linked to my Easy Video Suite. And what it also has is an embed code, not just a regular embed code, but a responsive embed code, meaning an embed code that's compatible with mobile devices. And we all know what's been going on with the mobile industry and where it's moving and why it's essential to have mobile compatible information on your website. Something to have in mind when creating your membership website. Another added feature with Easy Video Suite is in addition to protecting your content on your WordPress website, Easy Video Suite will protect your videos from displaying on other domains. So when you create your membership website, if you're using Easy Video Suite, you want to be sure to add your domain to the security of your video in order for your video to display on your membership website. Otherwise, it may not work. So something to have in mind, but it's added security if you choose, if you choose to use Easy Video Suite. Now, what do you do as far as creating your videos? For my video modules, I uh, created video intros and outros for each video, and then I had video content pertaining to that specific module. And with technology available today, it's very possible to create your own content for your membership website entirely on your Mac, which is what I did. I used Keynote and GarageBand for creating my video intros and outros. And for my video content, I used ScreenFlow and a Snowball mic. So if you are creating video tutorials from your screen. Um, using ScreenFlow is great for Macs, but you also wanna make sure the audio quality is quality. So what these are things to have in mind when creating your membership website for your videos. So now what do you do when launching your site? And this is where you have many, many options from live events, webinars, joint ventures, and so on. What I've seen many people in my field do, which has been very successful, are joint ventures or what we call JVs. To give you an idea, Amy Porterfield is one of the leading authorities on Facebook marketing, and James Wedmore is one of the leading authorities on YouTube. They have both created their own membership websites pertaining to that specific platform. Amy Porterfield has a membership website called FB Influence, where she teaches people about Facebook marketing, and James Wedmore has a membership website called Video Traffic Academy, where he teaches people how to use YouTube to build an unstoppable brand using YouTube videos. Now, both of their membership websites for either FB Influence or Video Traffic Academy is an entrance fee of $97 in order to access the content. And to give you an idea of how successful these membership websites have done, um, as of last week, Amy Porterfield had over 5,000 members in her private Facebook group for the FB Influence, and James Woodmore had over 4,000. So if each member paid $97, you can do the math as far as the amount of success the membership site has created. Now, this doesn't take into account advertising or joint venture commissions, but membership websites can still be very successful if you have a great system in place. Now, what they've done, which is something very interesting um, and something you can consider if you have success within your own membership website, is creating a formula that works and is a system that other people can learn and use for their own success. So what Amy Porterfield did was her system for creating successful Facebook ads using Facebook marketing, she created into her own membership website called the Facebook Profit Lab. And James Wedmore did the same thing. The five specific videos he found helpful as far as uh, using his system on YouTube, he created into the 48-hour film school. 
and both membership websites for the independent level fee for either Facebook Profit Lab or 48 Hour Film School is $497. And this was the point of the joint venture last week that James Wedmore hosted to his followers where Amy Porterfield was the guest speaker for. At the end of the webinar, after providing valuable content about Facebook marketing, she gave viewers an opportunity to sign up for her Facebook Lab. But she didn't just have the independent level. What each social media leader has done was they created a VIP level, which was a much higher fee, which came with more exclusive access to them and more handholding. And that VIP level went for almost $1,000, but it was only limited to 100 people. And given how successful each leader has become in their own field and how respected they are as an authority in that field, it didn't surprise me that following the webinar that day, Amy Porterfield's Facebook Profit Lab VIP level sold out. So this is the kind of success membership websites can see if they have a successful system in place that works. And that's essentially what the true beauty is behind a WordPress membership website. If the information stays relevant and stays valuable and continues to solve problems that apply to a large market, your membership website can continue to generate revenue even on autopilot. Or you can use your one membership website and transform it into a separate membership website that could be set at a higher fee than your original membership website, where you could even offer VIP access like Amy and James have done. Um, that's it for my presentation on how to create a WordPress membership website. Thank you so much for coming and being part of this replay. You can find more about me at my website, abitalidenbaum.com, and follow me on Twitter at avidabital. Thank you so much.